we would rather live for and live in but you, God, because you are the reason why we breathe and you are the air that we breathe. We thank you, God, for today we are here in your presence with your people, and we believe it's going to be the best day of our lives. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on and give him a shout of praise. Yeah. Woo! Why don't we all shout, good morning, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And hug three people around you. Tell them, I'm so glad you're here. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I am so glad you are here. Hallelujah. Do we have any first timers in the house? Raise your hand. Those who are serving. Wow. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is special because of you first-timers. We're so happy that you're here. We pray that you would continue, continue to journey with us and learn and grow in this family of faith. Uh, we have a special gift and a short message for you outside in the lobby right after the feast. Can we all shout, welcome. We want to say hi to everyone who's watching on TV and over the internet. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you, and may you receive his powerful word wherever you are. Are you ready to be blessed? How many of you have been having a great year so far? Raise your hand. Amen. Tap someone beside you and say, keep it up. Have you been blessed? Have you been blessed by our talks? What, what was the first talk? Nakalimutan nyo na, na bless kayo pero hindi nyo na alala. Imagination. Number two was what? Imitation. Number three was implementation. And today we are going to be talking about impact. Everybody say impact. And we are going to be talking about this last ingredient where God has specifically given you a purpose to impact the world, all right? Tell someone beside you, make some impact. Kung katabi mo yung tito mo, sabi mo, you have impact, tito. Amen. So let's come before God with all of our hearts as we make the sign of our faith slowly and meaningfully together in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, stretch your arms out wide. With one voice, say, Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessing, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word, so I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved, I'm God's servant, and I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my feet. One more time, say impact. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. It's, it's, it's a very, very popular verse. So I want you to read it all together. You know what? There's power when you hear yourself say the word. It's different when I or the preacher says it to you. It's different when you hear it. But it's different when you say it and you speak it to yourself. That it's, that's why it's important we always say, say to the person beside you. Say out loud. It's not just for gimmick's sake it's because the bible says faith comes by hearing so you need to hear yourself and practice yourself preaching to yourself the word of god you understand that yes so let's read it with one voice together ready get set go for we are god's handiwork created in christ jesus to do good works which god prepared in advance for us to do one more time say handiwork Say in advance. I love this. I, I, I love this verse 
because it says three things, all right? Number one is that you are God's handiwork. Tell someone beside you, you're God's handiwork. The Bible says that when God created the heavens, the stars, the moon, and the sun, and, and, and all of these things, and, and the animals, and you know, all, all of those things, he, he thought about them and He spoke them into creation. You understand? He spoke them into creation. But when, they, when God made man, when God made you and me, He formed us with His hands. Check it out. That's what it says. He formed us with His hands. I, I was looking at a pair of, of, of leather shoes that cost 65,000 pesos. And I said, why are they so expensive? Sir, they are handmade. Hand-sewn. And because of that, not one of them looks exactly like the other. It wasn't put in a factory and mass-produced. When it's handmade, there are little imperfections, differences between this one and the next one because you can never get it exactly the same way. Do you understand? And that's how God did, with the, did it with you. He made you so perfectly yet so uniquely that you are not like anyone else. Kawawa naman kung dalawa yung ganyan katabi mo, di ba? Tama na yung isa. Parang, di ba? <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. But seriously, tell someone beside you, there's no one like you. Number two, the second thing that this tells us is that you were created to do good. Everybody say good. Tell someone beside you, you're created to do good. That is why when you do not do good, it doesn't feel right. Do you ever get that feeling? When you lie, parang kinakabahan ka, pinapawisan ka. When you cheat, it, it just afterwards, something, you know, when you hurt someone, it doesn't feel right. Something in you rebels because that conscience in you is telling you, this is not for you. This is not what you were made to do. A, a lot of people use the rational, tao lang. But the funny thing is, if it is human to do wrong, does that mean it's less human to do right? No. You become more of a human when you do good because you were created in God's image and likeness. When you do the right thing, all the more ka nagiging tao. Do you get what I'm saying? So tell someone beside you, tao ka. Hindi tao lang. Amen? And the last thing that this verse says, I love it. It says, your good works are God prepared. Say that together. Your good works are God. These guys on stage, alright? You see them? From the moment they were born, God gave that guy the ability to play the keyboard, the ability to play the drums, the bass. These young people over here, beautiful voices, great fingers to play the guitar. They gave you a smiling face so you could be an usher at the feast. They, he, God gave you a, a love for numbers so that you could crunch them as an accountant. God gave you a big generous heart so you could run a foundation. God pre-prepared the gifts He has given you because He also predestined the good works that you were meant to do. I believe God has given you specific, say specific, specific good deeds to do. And how do you know that? It's because of your gifting. It's because of your talents. It's because of your passion, that burning fire within you that will not rest until you do that good thing. Brothers and sisters, carry out your calling. Carry out your calling with passion because you were designed to impact the world in a way that no one else is going to do except you. Amen? Tell someone beside you, hold that person's hand, squeeze it until blood comes out. Tell that person you were designed, preordained to bless the world, to impact the world like no one else can. Amen? Give God a clap offering. Give your greatness to the world.
brothers and sisters. Give your greatness to the world and allow God to use you to make an impact today. In Jesus' name, put your hand over your chest and say, Father, I'm ready to impact this world with the gifts you've given me. Use me. And as you use me, I know you will bless me so that you can use me more. <laughs> in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a lamp unto And give him some love. Let him hear your voice. Come on. Your voice. Yeah, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Amen. That was beautiful, George. Thank you. A big hand for George. Big hand for the worship team. Thank you so much, guys. Please be seated, everybody. Touch somebody beside you. Tell that person, God will speak to you today. And greet that person and say, hello, gorgeous. We've got 55 gorgeous people from La Salle, I heard. This big group of uh, La Salle from Batangas. Are you here? Where are you? I'm from the Ateneo, but I love you. Thank you so much, guys, for coming. Such a treat. Such a treat. You've got greatness in you. You really do. Put your hand over your chest. Just say that. Declare that to the world. There's greatness in me. I, I want you to touch somebody beside you in the shoulder or in the arm and, and, and just pinch that person until it bleeds a bit. And, and, and tell that person, there's greatness in you that you've got to give the world. You really do. You know, last week we, we went old school, really old school, and we talked about hard work. We said if you want to have a best year ever, if you want to be, have success in your life, you've got, you've got to work hard. But, but we're going to qualify it today. Because a lot of people are working hard, but they don't have any impact on the world. They don't have any impact on their lives. You, you know what I'm talking about, right? I was talking to a guy, a manager of a company. He works, get this. 16 hours a day. No joke. He, he counted it. 16 hours every single day. But the absurd thing about it is that he is dying inside. He hates his job. Does this sound familiar? And what makes it worse is this. He is well paid and he has zero savings. Ask me why. Because he works so hard, he has no joy in his work. He gets his joy from things. Everybody say, uh-huh. Does that sound familiar? Because you don't have any joy in what you do, you try to get your joy elsewhere. So he tries to get his joy from a Rolex watch. And so he has a Rolex watch worth half a million but he has no savings and no investments. Terrible. And then he justifies it by, I work so hard, I deserve it. Does that sound really, really familiar? <laughs> and you know what? There's nothing wrong with a Rolex watch. Remember a teaching about that? There's a difference between, we say it in Tagalog, there's a difference between dakot and kurot. Are you, do you remember that? We, we, we said that a long time ago, that if your Rolex represents a dakot from your net worth, it's wrong. But if it's just a kurot from your net worth, maybe you're okay. You forgot that whole teaching. Ne never mind. Just, <laughs> anyway, we're talking about something else right now. But, but my point is this. If, if, you, if you're able to get, you know buy that you know, half a million watch, then be sure that you're investing the same amount or more and, and giving that same amount and, and being generous. 
But, but here's my point. It's not, it's not the fact that he's working 16 hours a day because I, I have a confession. I, there are days I work 16 hours a day. There are days like that. I remember one time. I uh, can never forget that day. I went to Tagaytay, drove there, had a luggage at the back of my car. It was filled with financial books because I was going to write my very first financial book ever. It was a game changer for me from writing all spiritual books. Now I'm going to write my first ever financial book. So I went to Tagaytay, holed up in a hotel overlooking Taal Lake and Taal Volcano. And I worked from 6 in the morning until 10 o'clock in the evening. My only rest was to walk around the veranda of that hotel, overlooking that volcano, breathing in and, and, and just absorbing you know, the beauty around me. And then I go back to work. 6 in the morning, 10 in the evening, every single day for five straight days. And then by the last day, I w drove back to Manila and, and can never forget that because in my laptop was the first manuscript of the eight habits of the truly rich, a book that has changed the lives of thousands. It is now 100,000 copies in print, more than that, and it has blessed the world. And, and you know what? After that five days of just writing 16 hours, was I tired? Physically, a bit, but emotionally, I was high. Why? Ask me why. Because I was made for it. I was designed to do it. Am I making sense to you? That if you, how many of you want to impact the people around you and impact a generation and impact the world? Raise your hand. Do you want impact? You've got to do what you were designed to do. Poke somebody in the arm and say, you've got to do what you were designed to do. I remember talking to a teacher, and she was telling me, she was in her classroom. It was four in the afternoon. The kids were all out of the classroom. They were going home. And she was cleaning the blackboard with a moist cloth. And then she turned to the window. And she saw her students laughing and talking and playing and running and going home. And all of a sudden, something clicked in her heart. And an overwhelming sense of peace flooded her. And she said these words, I was made for this. I was made for this. My dear friends, can you say that right now about what you're doing in your work or as a mother taking care of your kids or, or, or your ministry or, or your job or your business? Can you actually say those words? I was made for this. Can we try? Can you say it with honesty and with sincerity? Whatever you're doing now, you were made by God for this. The, the point I'm driving at is this. I'm going to ask you two big questions. And it's, it, these are the questions that you need to ask yourself. Everybody say, I'm ready. Okay. Number one, you've got to ask this question. What's my focus? Can everybody say that? What's my focus? What's, what's your one thing? What's your special gift? What's your unique calling? What's your greatness? What's the greatness that needs to come out? Are you listening to what I'm saying? I, I believe in hard work. You, you've got to work hard. I really believe that. Do you want success? In every area. Even in your spiritual life, you know, even in your family life, even in your health, you've got to work hard. But, everybody say, but. It's not enough to increase hard work. You also have to increase, ask me what? Self-knowledge. Everybody say self-knowledge. You, your hard work must be based on deep self-awareness. 
You should know yourself really, really well and understand what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses. I've, I've been rubbing elbows with very successful people. And here's what I noticed. These successful people, they focus on their strength. Everybody say, focus on their strength. And they forget their weakness. That's the, you know, if in school, let, let's simplify my analogy. In school, let's say there are four subjects. And your little son, in those four, four subjects, his grades were A, two Bs, and one F. Tell me, what will happen? Repeat. Your kid brings home a report card, four subjects, one A, two Bs, one F. What will happen? The principal will call you for a parent-teacher dialogue. The teacher will be there in front of you and the teacher will say, Mommy, Junior has one F. We're happy with the A, we're happy with the two Bs, but Mommy, tell Junior to work on his F. Yes or no? I want you to know that if you do that in life, you can do that in school, but if you do that in life, that is the perfect formula for mediocrity. Perfect formula for mediocrity. Are you listening to what I'm saying? If you want massive success in your life, there is only one formula. Ask me what? Everybody say, I'm listening. Do you want massive success? This is the only formula I know. Pour 100% energy and time and investment and attention on your A. And make your, so focus your life on your A, on your strength, so that you can move it up to super strength. And then later on, move up your super strength to mega super strength. And then work on it some more until your mega super strength gets higher and becomes ultra mega super strength. I just copied La, La Paz by Bachoy, how they, how they kind of like, you know, rate the, 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 the bad choice, you know, to the point where you focus so much on your strength, on your skill, that, that you raise up your skill. Is, is everybody listening to me right now? This, this is powerful stuff. This, is, this will release your life from mediocrity. You raise up your skill level to the point of, of, of being part of the top 3% of the population in your barangay or in your town or in your city or in your country or in your world. That you, you tell somebody beside you, you have, you have genius in you. And where is it found? It's found in your A. Now listen to me. If you work on your F, you know what's going to happen? Ask me what? It's going to become a C. Yes or no? If you work on your F, it will become a C. And will you impact anyone with a C? Can I give you an example? Automatic memories locked in my brain when I heard words like sine, cosine, and tangent. It's just, I need to go to psychotherapy. <laughs> if there was time travel, I would go back in time, look for the parents of the guy who invented trigonometry, <laughs> and I would prevent them from meeting so that there will be no trigonometry in the face of the earth. I did not like trigonometry. Now think about, think about this. What if, what if for the next 10 years, I don't do anything else but study trigonometry? For the next 10 years, I will work on my weakness. And I will, I will sit down in front of professors of trigonometry every single day for the next 10 years. Do you know what will happen after the 10th year? Ask me what? I will die. <laughs> or I will end up in a mental institution. Or 
what if, let's say, not, none of those happens? What if, say, I don't, I don't die and I don't end up in a mental institution and somewhere, somehow, by some miracle, I hold on to my sanity? Do you know what will happen after 10 years? Do you ever think that there is this slight chance that on the 10th year, I will be such a great mathematician that I will be able to invent trigonometry 2.0? Would there be any slight chance at all that I will become an esteemed professor in MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology? No, absolutely not. After 10 years, if I work on my weakness, I'll probably become a teacher in MIT, Marinduque Institute of Technology. <laughs> I, I, will be, I will probably be an okay mathematician. M make sense? But will I impact the world? B but here's the thing. If I, if I work on my weakness for 10 years, you know what we'll lose? Ask me what? I would not be able to develop my skill of communication, and I would not have been able to write 45-plus best-selling books to bless the world. That's my point. So hold someone's hand again, please, and tear it apart. Come on, just, 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 just mangle it and, and, and tell, look at the person in the eye and, and ask that person, what's your genius? Ask that person, what's your A? You, you, you've got to identify your A and develop it and, and bring it up to genius level so that you can impact the world. You've got to identify what it is. You've got to... You know, what, one of the things that I think self-knowledge is, is, not, is not very common. People don't know who they are and people don't know their strength. You, you can see it when, when you watch American Idol, n not, the, not, the, not the finals, but in the audition level. In the, in the audition level, you, you hear these, sometimes they, they let them sing. The, 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 those who are applying to, to be part of, the, of that contest and they sing and, and when they sing they sing so horribly that, that you wonder don't they have real friends? <laughs> I mean, you know a, a real friend would tell them you know, friend when you sing you sound like my vacuum cleaner you sound like my cat when it fights with my dog. I mean, you know, cook or dance or say poetry, but don't sing, you know? But, but there, in fact, what, I'm, what I want you to do is, I want you to ask these four questions, but two of them I want you to ask yourself. What do I do that when I do it, I help the most people? What do I do that when I do it, I help the most people? Question number two, what do I do that when I do it, I feel the most alive? Share to the person beside you the answer to question one and question two. Come on. What do you do that when you do it, you're able to bless so many people? Wow. Wow. And what do you do that when you do it, you're so alive? <laughs> ah. Come on, giving you some time, giving you some time. Wonderful. I'll move to the next two questions. Are you ready? This time, I want you to ask people that you trust and people who know you. Two questions. Number one, where do you think I excel? 
And two, what do I do that helps you the most? Okay, turn to somebody who you know and, and ask them, Saan ako magaling? Saan ako magaling? Steve, can you come here? Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. Come on. He doesn't know that I'm going to call him. Yeah. Steve, Steve owns one of the biggest catering businesses in the country. Wow. But once upon a time, you were a, you were a waiter. Yes. And uh, even now, even if you, you own, sometimes, you know, Steve would have 20 catering services simultaneous. No joke, you know. And, and he's, he's the guy who can serve a thousand people. Or what's your biggest uh, crowd that you ever served? 10,000. 10,000 people. You serve 10,000 people. But, but when I attend a reception and, and he's the one catering and, and uh, he, he would still be a waiter. <laughs> and and, and, and uh, what I love about Steve is that he'd be there serving people like a waiter. He owns the company. And, and the reason why you do it, I know why you do it, Steve. Why? You love people. And you love what you do. How many years have you been doing it? Almost 20. 20 years. And from being a waiter, you, you rose up the ranks. And uh, God has blessed you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> it's amazing when, when, I, when I bump into people who found their, their genius. And for him, it was waiting tables. For him, it was, it was food on a tray and, and giving to people. And when, when you focus on, on what you're, you're good at, boom, blessings flow. You impact the lives of people. And, and I, I, I love it when, when that happens. Which brings me to the second big question. The first big question is, what's your focus? But your second big question is, what's your fuel? Can you say that with me? What's your fuel? That teacher I talked about in her classroom at 4 p.m., cleaning her blackboard with her moist cloth, and all of a sudden she had this sense of peace in her heart because she knew she was made for it. Was she doing it for the money? No. Teachers usually don't do teaching for the money. They do it because they love to do it. They've found their fuel. I don't do it. Can I serve somebody today? Can I impact a person's life today? What I want you to do is discover, I'm going to help you discover your your place of impact with your with what I call a sweet spot. You've got to go to everybody say sweet spot. Look for passion and potential. Right smack in the middle, you will find your purpose. Your potential, your, your passion is what do you do that when you do it, you're so alive. And your potential means you know your, your genius, your greatness, your skill. That when you do it, you're so good at it. And, and of course, you were not good at it at the start. But then as, as you kept on doing it, because it was your passion, you began to improve in it so much that it has become such a gift. The sweet spot would be purpose. Amen? Now, some of you may have a passion for singing. But it's not in the middle because you're not good at it. When you sing... People feel as though they're being root canal in a dental clinic. But it's your passion. You love singing. So here's my advice for you. Sing in the bathroom alone and, and stay there. <laughs> but it's not your purpose. Make sense? 
it, it, it's not your purpose. I like to dance. <laughs> but I'm not good at it. I'm not good at it. So it's got to be there in the middle. That's your purpose. But here's the thing. This works only for usually singles and, and missionaries who don't have responsibilities for families and kids. Because you can't survive on that. You know, your fuel should not be money. And, and I, I hope that you wake up in the morning going to work not just because of the money, right? Or, or else you'd be very miserable. I always say this. If you work just for the money, I have only one thing to tell you. Condolence. You live a miserable life. But even if I say that, money is still important. Money is still important. That's why you need another equation if you have a family and if you're supporting some people. It's there, there's got to be, the sweet spot is there between passion, potential, and pesos. The sweet spot. You've got to find a way to monetize, everybody say monetize, your gift to the world. You, you, you're, you love doing it. You love the people that you serve. And, and you're, you're great at it. And you just keep at it, keep at it to the point where, oh, there's a way of monetizing somehow. And then that sweet spot is where you... What I want to do is I want to pray for you. Can everybody stand up just to respond to God? Because you know what? George gave that powerful passage. You are God's handiwork. Amen? Meaning to say you're handmade. I love his illustration about the leather shoes. You're handmade. You're, you're very, very valuable. And he said, he said that you're, you're made for goodness. You're made to do good in this world. You're supposed to reflect the goodness of God. Ask me how. Louder. By the greatness that God has placed in you. There is greatness in you and many people don't know it. Many people look down on themselves. Many people say, oh, wala, hindi naman ako magaling sa maski sa ano eh. That's, that's not true. Steve, can you be at the second session? I want to... <laughs> Steve discovered it by holding a tray for crying out loud. And he discovered, magaling siyang mumiti eh. Ang galing-galing niya mag-serve eh. And then he notices the little things. Steve, I love how you, how you set up the plates and the glasses and the spoons. I love how you, the napkin is folded. And I saw you. You're the owner of the company. But, but you know, everything has to be straight and everything has to... He, he, that... Am I making sense to you? If right now you feel that you're stuck in your life, it simply means you've not discovered your genius. But it's there. And that greatness is within you. And just, let's pray together. Put your hand over your chest. Everybody say, Jesus, thank you. There is greatness in me. And you want me to bless the world with what I have. Help me to use it for your glory and to impact many people. Thank you, Father. I believe in you. There are people here, your gift is to comfort people. There are people here, your genius is to listen and to show love. There are people here, your genius is to create stuff and invent stuff. Whatever it is, I want you to lift up your life and your future and let God use you in a powerful way.
Lord, I pray for every person here. I pray for the miracles that they need. I pray for the healing that they need. I pray for the blessings that they need. Lord, I declare blessings will chase after them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Put your arms around somebody. Just remind that person, there's greatness in you. There's greatness in you. There's greatness in you. Oh, there is. There really is. There's greatness in you. Uh, Jewel's Gathering of All Women venue is Meeting Room 5, not Reception Hall, for February 5. For February 5. Okay, what's the, uh, okay, so it's wrong. That thing, whatever you saw is wrong. Okay. Meeting room five on February 5. The other announcement I have to make is that we're going to have our healing seminar. Those of you who want to work on your health, it will be on February 4. Am I right? February 4. Okay. And the other announcement is uh, I'm, I have a webinar. It's for free. Webinar. Uh, Facebook. Go to my Facebook, facebook.com slash Brother Bo Sanchez. It'll be on Thursday, 8 p.m. So, you know, you're at home, you want to listen to a webinar on entrepreneurship. I want to answer the question, uh, are you made to be an entrepreneur? Some people are not, and it's okay, but find out. Uh, I have that webinar, just share it to people. All right, Thursday night, see you at the webinar. And... Uh, Everybody say, I'm blessed. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's continue to give our best to the Lord.